arguments and next thing you know like four hours went by and you're like what the <laughs> fuck like what happened to the time like you look at the clock and it's like it's 11 o'clock at night and you're like holy crap Welcome to Impact Premiers. We're your hosts, Daverick Lyles. And Sean Alexander. It's a good day today. It is a good day. Hey, I have to say something. I got a fresh haircut. You noticed that. Huh? I did. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got the best haircut and the awesome, his, his sweatsuit. I'm wearing your colors, bro. I know, man. Combat ready. Green Beret. Hey. That's all you. Thanks for serving. Hey, thank you Fourth for- Fourth July weekend. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Yeah, right? Right on, man. So, Dev, um, this is probably one of- our favorite topics that we talk about quite often, just about choices, decisions, and you know, not being stuck in the same spot if it ends up being repetitive with no progress. So why don't you go ahead and take away uh, with the subject and uh, see where we go. Choices and decisions. I like this one, Sean, because I think people don't take the time to, to reflect on their thought around their decision and choice they make based on the event that's happening. Yes. And I had a bad habit of this, and I want you to get into this. One of my pledges this year was to think before I act. You know, because I'm, I'm one of those guys that's like, go. Are you a quick thinker when you act? Like, can you, th- can you think at the speed of action, or do you have to stop for a second and just kind of like analyze and then act? Well, when I'm upset, right, then I, then I, I respond. And that response, I have to... Emo- emotional responder. Exactly. I think everybody is, though, most part. So I like to think about it, and, and to answer your question, yes, I like to think about it. Because I have a habit of responding off the cuff, and it's like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have sent that email. I shouldn't have sent that text. I shouldn't have said that, sent that uh, Slack message of your corporate world. So I like to think about it before, and I, I've made it a habit, a, a strong business and personal habit right now to... Wait, sit back, analyze the situation, and figure out what the best decision is and the best outcome. Not always for me, though, but it can be for the other individual or business. Well, you know what? Someone taught me this a long time ago. If you're ever in some sort of a debate, argument, disagreement, and it's over you know, email, text, or whatnot, someone told me that if you're going to respond, and even whether you are in the heat of the moment or you've taken your time to think about what you want to say— they said to compose your email or your text and actually send it to yourself first. Don't, don't just type it up and then pause and read it. Actually send it to yourself. And then when it comes in, give yourself 10, 15 minutes to clear your head from whatever the topic was. Then actually go back to it and open it and read the message you sent to yourself. And you'll actually be able to analyze with more clarity to see like, does this make sense? Can I send this? Should I send this? Is this going to serve me and the other party? Or could it be potentially destructive or not, it actually gives you, an, it, it, it almost gives you a second set of eyes from yourself. Does that make sense? Right. And I have found that to be very productive during certain times because, you know, you, both you and I have been in situations where in business, especially, um, someone says something and they might be out of line. And, you know, just because of our personalities, we're very quick to check people if they're out of line. But sometimes the way we want to check them, especially me, comes off really hard, fuck your feelings type of thing. And I, for the most part, I don't really care. <laughs> but there are times where I do have to check myself and not have the attitude because if I blow somebody away, then that could be potential lost business, revenue, whatever, partnership, who knows. Hey, have you watched that episode in Billions? You know the show I'm talking about, Axe Capital. Yeah, but which episode? Bobby, Bobby Axelrod, where he, where he had to go into a briefing with the attorney general. And they were grilling him, and, and his, his attorney said, if you don't know the answer, you get confused. Say you need to take a bathroom break to think about it. And it stalled him. They put him in a situation, with, they put him in a situation where any answer he gave would jeopardize his corporation and his seat as a chairman. Okay. And if he said one thing, A, it was bad. If he said B, it was bad. So right? a lose-lose situation. So he said, 
gentlemen, I need to take a break. I need to use the bathroom. She has to admit, what, so did he have to make a decision of which losing situation he wants to take? No, he came back and then changed and went in a different direction and avoided <laughs> it. It was great. <laughs> changed the, he changed the trajectory of the, of the response. Right. Okay. That's pretty awesome. But it's smart. You know, but it's the same thing. It's it's no different than we say. Like, I mean, it's no different than when like you are in a heated argument with a, with your partner, for example. If it starts to escalate, walk away. Someone's got to walk away. One person might not. So say, someone's got to walk away. Say that one more time. When you're in the heat of a moment, even if it's with a partner, a spouse, best friend, wife, husband, you have to know that as soon as it starts to escalate, where voices start to raise. Walk away. And why is that? Because why do you think that is? I don't think. I know on this because I've, I've, I'm guilty of it also. Because there are some, there are certain things that you might say that you can't take back, and you can't, and it'll get used against you forever. And so obviously, yeah, we're not supposed to do that. But there's number one, there's certain things you can't take back. Number two, it causes a whole nother array of emotions that could cause more challenges to the situation. And at the same time, like as the argument and the disagreement starts to escalate, you, you stop hearing each other. You just start listening to respond, not listening to actually hear and absorb and internalize to see like, okay, maybe I do need to change something that my partner needs me to. But you can't make those decisions and you can't hear your partner if it's escalating too hard and too heavy. So both parties gotta step the fuck away from each other, go in two different rooms, Cool off. Go on social media. Go read. Well, not read. no, you're don't too, go. You're too, you're too <laughs> don't heated. go on social media. Well, sometimes just to like, fi- right. just to see don't funny stuff. Don't post anything. Just to, no, no, just to go see funny stuff. Just, yeah. to, just to get a good laugh, um, you know, or just go do something to preoccupy your mind a little bit, and then come back and revisit like 10, 15 minutes, and that's like an agreement that you have with your partner. You say like, hey, if we ever come to a certain point where we're disagreeing and it's heat and it's getting heated, we need to agree that you and I will go in two separate rooms and just kind of. You know, it's not worth it. No, to cool off a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll reintervene, pick up the conversation, and and try to hear each other, versus just listen to respond. Yeah, because I believe that sometimes you can be right and still be wrong, and so trying to be right in a dispute or disagreement, you can still be wrong. Well, in other words, if pick your if, battles, right? If I say, you know, hey, do this, and my person takes it, or my partner takes it, or business colleague or employee. I'm making a choice to listen to them or do what I want to do. But if they say, hey, that offends me, and I say it shouldn't offend you, it doesn't matter what I think. Right. It's how it affects that person. Correct. So, And that's where it gets escalated, I feel, on my end. And so I choose to walk away. You have to. Say, hey, let's, 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 let's table this for another time. That's a good, good, good point. You have to. It's, it's, it'll save – it doesn't just save a certain circumstance or situation – most importantly, it saves time because I know we've all been here. Like we get into these heated arguments and next thing you know, like four hours went by and you're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like what happened to the time? Like you look at the clock and it's like it's 11 o'clock at night and you're like, holy crap. And then you realize like, man, we should have just stepped away, done some, some productive stuff or just kind of cooled off and got a couple of laughs in with doing our own personal things. Go to the gym, blow some steam, come back. And the next thing you know, you've at least done some productive things and it's still only nine o'clock instead of 11 o'clock because you know, the amount of time that went by, because, you know, in a heated argument, a few so, hours feels like five minutes. Yeah, and, and talking about choices and decisions, we, we see people, and this is going to go off into life choices and, and, and success choices, but we, and we kind of touched on the last podcast, people making choices and decisions, they have two options. Stay where you're at in life, whether it be spiritual, mental, uh, financial relationship wise, if you're failing, you have a choice and decision to make because we talk about it. We don't want to hear your bitching. If you don't make a decision to change. Correct. And it might only be a couple of decibel volume turns to the right versus, Oh my God, I got to do all this. I got to stop doing this. And no, it might just be a little adjustment. That's why you may need to go get a coach, a player coach, like a mentor, a mentor, 
um, choose to leave your job if you're in a toxic environment or a relationship. But I want you to dive into this because you're really good about this and you, you, you coach personal uh, people on personal mental development, uh, lifestyle choices and decisions. What are some of the tools that you equip people with to make those decisions? Because some people aren't capable, I believe, of making those, them themselves or know to make those I think, decisions. I, I think and I believe at the same time that part of those challenges that people have with making those choices is number one um, – they don't have a set of core values when it comes to them and anything that revolves around their life. So whether you're in a relationship, you run a business, your core values have to, your, everything in your life has to revolve around your core values, who you are, what you stand for, what you represent. You know, one of yours could be integrity, honor, you know, like a code of honor, like the military. Right. We all have our own code of honor. You know, and that's something that you have to make a choice to have and you write it down and you have to stand by that because that, at that point, then when you're, whenever you're in a certain situation, you can always fall back on your, on your values. But then you also have to have a choice of, you have to make a decision on having daily non-negotiables and daily habits, certain things that, you ha that have to be done that keep you in line with your life, your business, how you operate. Kind of back to like what we talked about in our last episode with, you know, peak performers. These daily habits that you choose to have, these daily non-negotiables. There's like four or five daily non-negotiables you have to choose that cannot be compromised at any cost. Seven days a week, right? By having that, it allows everything else to fall in place. Because then everything else go, gets scheduled and gets scheduled and plugged into the right places based on your daily non-negotiables and your daily habits. You compromise those, everything else kind of turns into this big scattered mess. I feel like some people are afraid to make choices and decisions because of other people's feelings or responses, right? Like we had a, you know, we talked about the F your feelings day, right? You know, but, it, and I won't say the person, but there's people that have been around my life where people say, well, I don't know how you do that. They're a family member. And it's like, look. I can't be held back. And, it, and it, you say it's selfish, but my success will benefit that individual that's trying to hold me back mentally. Correct. I had to make that choice. Well, that's it. Cha cha you have to make a choice to change your environment, change the people you're around, change the people you choose to hang out with. Because for the most part, we've all, as we've grown up, not as our personal growth, but as we've grown up and as we age, your circle will change. Let's say you have a circle of five people. Every certain milestones, three out of those five people need to get switched out. Yeah. Because they just don't serve your life anymore. And that's not trying to sound arrogant, cocky. It's not trying to say like you're better than them. But there just comes a point where they serve their purpose in your life. And now they're more of an anchor or they're just stagnant because they, got, they rose with you to that certain milestone and now they're good. They just want to sit and coast there, but you want to keep growing. So now you have to make a decision. Like, I can't have this person in my circle anymore. They're no longer serving me, and eventually that shit's going to rub off on me. I have some good friends that I've grown up with that I'm still friends with from a distance. Sure. But there's a zero net gain value of Boom. me hanging out. And Say that again. Zero net value. There you go. And, it's, and that goes in relationships, too. But I want to stay on this because... People are like, oh, that's selfish. You, you, you jeopardize your friendship. No, I'm not, I'm not jeopardizing my friendship. But as you get older, that clock's ticking. Yeah. That clock is ticking. And what's scary is if you say, well, what's the average amount of time a person lives? And then you do the how many hours left or how many days left you have on this planet. And you do that and you're like, oh, my God, I got to get busy. But <clears throat> well, to answer your question or to talk about this, it, I still will be friends with people. And if they call... 911 for help. In other words, Dab, I'm having a hard time. Can we meet? Yeah. But I don't want to hang out with a person. And you may say that's mean or selfish, but you're, there's no value. And if I, if I, look, if I make $500,000 a year, that's my income. If I want to go to the next level and I hang around people that make $40,000 a year, <laughs> and it's not that I'm better. But if you, I had a mentor tell me this, if you, you ever notice that people make 
I'll give you a number. People that make $60,000 a year hang around people that make $60,000 a year. Yeah. There's a reason for that. How do you get to the next level? I was smart enough to figure that out. I was like, I want to hang around that guy. And when we moved to Vegas, Iris and myself, I said, okay, we make X, Y, Z. How do we, how do we get to the you know, 3.5 million mark a year? Hang around people that are making 6 million, 5 million. Who are those individuals? But if I'm sitting here, and again, not judging people, don't hate the people, but I, if I'm hanging around knuckle draggers, right, bottom feeders, and it's not based on your, it's based on your personality or your personal growth of the individual you are, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grow. I'm not gonna grow. Well, you can't because your your mental capacity cannot evolve. Your mental capacity stops thinking big because. If I make 40000 you make half a million, there's only so much I have to talk about when it comes to business, life, success, and decisions, I, choices. Like, I'm not, like, because if I'm making forty grand again, not to knock anybody, but if I'm only making 40000 a year, I only have so many choices and decisions that I can make to really take that to the next level. You're like... They're small steps, and I have to make those small steps, but as, at, at 40000 I have no business receiving coaching from someone who's making half a million now if they come to me and it's like hey let me help you great but if i go seek someone out that's making half a million i only make forty thousand. chances are what that person has to talk about i'm not even gonna fucking comprehend what they're saying because it's so over my head right unless i have put some heavy duty work into my growth and development and that's in our next episode but unless i've done that that then i can maybe comprehend and be like okay instead of trying to make some decisions with my money I got to figure out some power moves to make to change my lifestyle, my business, where I invest my time in. Because at that point, it's not the money that's valuable. It's my time. So where can I plug my time in to actually try to get to that guy's level? Yes. And ethically and with morally good values. Correct. Right. Because we can all go hustle the bad way. You and I yeah. have the ability. We, we know the we, people. Well, I have. I don't know if you have. Well, <laughs> we all have those, those contacts. But yeah, exactly. So, but, but here's an example. I'm a warm weather guy. I do not like the cold weather. <laughs> this is our I favorite. I hate topic. the cold weather. I love the cold weather. Uh, uh, you know, people in Seattle, it's 120 degrees, we're dying. Yeah, it's humid. It's 105 here is easy compared to 89 in Seattle. 89 in Seattle, you, you're, you're, the, that song, The Sweat, yeah. runs down my, you know, right? You're miserable. You made a comment, and this is about, I'm talking about being around people. That'll elevate your game. Sean brought this up, and I'm always anti cold, this and that. He goes, Dad, have you ever been to Aspen? I'm like, why the fuck do I want to go to Aspen? There's cold weather. I don't want to be cold, blah, 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 whine and bitch and moan. He's like, Dad, you're missing the point. He said, Do you know what's in Aspen? I said, Yeah, fucking snow. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about that because that opened my mind, and this is why Sean and me are colleagues, friends, and I, I choose to associate myself with a guy. Because he's bringing stuff to him like Aspen. Wait a minute. What do you talk about that? So in Aspen, you know, I go I go to Aspen at least once a year. Try to go a couple times a year. It really just depends. But I when I go to Aspen, so like there's obviously different. Like I've always said, quarterly I take certain I I, I recharge and I step away from reality a little bit. But when I go to Aspen, I don't just go to Aspen to recharge. I go to stretch my vision and take my big thinking to a whole different level. Aspen is the city of billionaires. In the entire world, more billionaires reside in Aspen than any other city in the entire on the planet. There's about 70 billionaires that live in Aspen. And you know why I didn't know that? Because, because all you thought about is a cold. <laughs> right, and I don't have billionaire friends. <laughs> or right. people that are mentored by billionaires or hang around billionaires. Right, and so my mentor is friends with billionaires and has been mentored by billionaires and knows a few billionaires that live out there. He's got access to certain things that I didn't even know about and him and I have been going there for the last five, six years and certain things he just revealed to me just this 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 year in, when did I go? February, I think it was? February, mm. March? I think it was March. I don't remember, but I think it was I March. I think it was right after April, wasn't it? it was no, May. definitely not. No, 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 no. It was definitely before that. Okay. It, was, it was at the end of the first quarter, I think it was. But anyway, there's certain things that he showed me and I'm like, why haven't you showed me this before? What the fuck? He's like, Sean, 
He's like, there are certain things that can only show you in phases. Like when you're ready, I can show you these certain things. Like he showed me this like secret club of like multi mega nine figure earners go to. And I'm like, dude, I've been here how many times? And I didn't even know this place existed. And it's called the Caribou Club. And it's, we went there. It's like almost underground. And there's two gatekeepers that basically dictate whether you're allowed to join this club or not. You have to pay a significant fee to join this club. And then having dinner there is not cheap at all. And then basically the people that go in there, there's all kinds of crazy deals and business plans that are, that are taking place. And you can feel, smell, and just the energy of success that's in that room. You're like... There's at least mega billions just sitting in here right now. And he, as he's giving me a tour, he's like, Sean, at every table, there's seven, eight, nine figure deals taking place right now. And as I'm walking by, I'm hearing about a hundred million dollar deal over here, like $300 million here, like billion dollar hedge fund. Like I'm hearing all kinds of like random stuff here and there. Cause I'm walking through us. So I'm just getting like little, little pickets here and little nuggets. And I'm like, why haven't you shown me this place before? He's like, because now you're ready and, and that's a choice and a decision that i made based on what sean said to go to aspen that's why i call everything the aspen effect that's that's of significant impact yeah it's a thought process that's you have to be at a certain point in life to comprehend that because most people that go to aspen and here's the thing aspen is a probably one of the most beautiful cities to go to if you go during the Spring season and during the winter season, it's amazing. And, you know, a lot of people do go there for vacation because it's an amazing place to be. But if you actually try to look at the bigger picture and, and go for a specific purpose, you'll see what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, the shittiest house in Aspen that's like 1,800 square feet is min minimum $5 million. And I looked it up. I looked up this trashy ass house banged up that you would see in some ghetto area, no pun intended, but it's like, and so I looked it up and it's $5 million and it's only 1,800 square feet. Well, you're not buying the house. You're buying the opportunity to be in Aspen. Correct. The zip code, which is the location and the access to unlimited wealth in your mind. Right. And then there's a house. There's there's houses there that are only eight nine thousand square feet ten thousand square feet that over here cost maybe like four five six million. In Aspen, it's fifty million plus for a ten thousand square foot home. Like fifty million dollars in Las Vegas can buy you a castle. See, and and this is what I'll say. That's mind blowing, but not unbelievable. And let me tell you why I say that. Because it's not unbelievable because my dreams and goals and visions are at that level. But if you have no dreams and goals, which I honestly believe a lot of people don't, they go, oh, that's unbelievable. I can't, how oh, that's crazy. Well, you need to expand your dreams. You know what? You and I actually have to make, it, make an episode and a topic on dreams and goals. And the only reason why I say that is because when you talk about dreams and goals to most people, or if you even attempt to, they're going to look at you all cockeyed like, who the fuck talks about and thinks about dreams and goals? They think goals are like... Just, you know, it's 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 undervalued and underplayed, number one. And I think when you talk about dreams, they're like, and it's like, did you forget who you were when you were four, five, six, seven, eight years old? Like, you dreamt everything. Because somebody stole their dream and told them to start thinking realistic. Right. So and at some point, you got to grow up and realize and make a choice. Like, man, like, I've been sold a lie my whole life. Like, I can have dreams. I can have goals. You know, and I have a decision. I can make the decision of actually changing the trajectory of my life and where I want to go and what I want. Choices and decisions, because you know, when you look at these billionaires and millionaires, I'm a good guy. You're a good dude, right? Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but what what's the difference between us and them? It's the choices, decisions, and mindset. Yeah. Right. Because Jeff Bezos, I have an old picture of Jeff Bezos. <laughs> and, sitting hairline and hair on the no, side. No, no, he he was sitting in this office in Seattle with the old. Remember the the the, the off white monitors. Yeah, and the, the old school computer. And yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He had a banner that he wrote out with paint. It said Amazon, and he stuck it on the wall. And he's in this one little office. 
And I remember driving over 520 Bridge in Seattle when I lived there, and they're like, oh, Amazon sells books online. A lot of people today don't know that they started like that. Here's a guy who everybody laughed at. You're selling books online? Why don't we go to a bookstore? And that's Dude, a service provider, Now too. the guy's the wealthiest man in the world. And he had a dream, and everybody laughed at him. Could you imagine? Hey, I own Amazon. What? Rainforest? No, it's a, it's a, a dot .com. What's a dot .com? But, but you know what? Because <laughs> now that you just said that, I'm going to press on this. He made a choice and his decision to not party, to not go see family when they wanted him to. He made, all, he made every sacrifice that he had to and as a choice to be where he's at now. And now guess what? That's, that's multi-generational money for the rest of the eternal lifespan of f families, his families, till the end of time. Oh, and I want to talk about this real quick. And, that's going, and, and, it's, and it's passive at this point, too. So, so I, I, I forget the person who said this to Shaq O'Neal in this interview. And he said, Shaq was talking about the difference between rich and wealth. He said, the difference between rich and wealth, he goes, the guy goes, no, wealth is when you die, your kids die, your grandkids die, their kids die, and their kids die. That money doesn't go down. It goes up. Yeah. Right? And he goes, the difference is between how much money you save versus spending. Because a lot of people, when they get paid, they go, oh, man, I got a $10,000 check. It's gone. They got that spent before it even gets to the bank. Right. And the IRS is the last person on their mind is to, to pay. That's why all these cars are getting bought, right? The, the, the recession checks, if you well, want to call them. Right. Well, and like, you know, the, one of the reasons why people will choose to not make a change with certain circumstances they're in to actually have the ability, the ability to change the trajectory of their life or to put themselves in a better position or better situation is because they see certain people that are leading with success and doing great. And for whatever reason, they hate on them. And there's usually one of two reasons, but the biggest one is because they're just not willing to put in the same amount of work. You know, we talked about it last episode. Like I, I work 20 hours a day. I choose to do that. But by choosing to do that, one week puts me three weeks ahead. I love it, man. I love it. By putting myself three weeks ahead, you know, we can't talk about it yet. We will one day. But that, in, over the course of two years of basically having three week weeks, certain things have taken place that's going to put me in a whole different play, playing field in the next 18 months. And you and two or three other people are the only ones that actually know about this. And we can't talk about it yet, but it's because of the amount of work and time and sacrifice I've chosen to do. I don't go to parties, I don't go hang out with people. I don't go to these pool parties and it's not because I hate people. I don't want to go hang out with them. Like it's because I want certain things in life and I want 100% absolute undeniable freedom from everything. That's, that's what you have to do. And usually people hate on what they gave up on. I'm gonna say that again. People hate on what they gave up on. I love that. They're not willing to put in the work. They tried to. They didn't last long enough. They didn't have the endurance. They didn't have the mental fortitude. And they said, fuck it. It's too hard. It's too long. I don't want to wait that long. They didn't want to write out the patience game. And so they stopped. So now they're stuck in a certain position while other people are rising. And they start hating on that person because now that person has certain things, but they gave up on the will, the work ethic, and the drive to get to that point. And so I they hate on what they give up on. Right. And I think a lot of people misunderstand that you, you can still have fun, but within reason. You can still enjoy yourself, but you still have to not forget the primary number one goal. Dude, you and I work seven days a week. No days off because the world needs a better version of us. Right. No days off because the world needs a better version of but us. But I have fun while I'm working. <laughs> right. But we actually enjoy our craft. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. We have a passion for it. We love what we do. And yeah, you know what? Just because we love what we do doesn't mean there's certain days that kick our fucking ass and you know, either. And you know what's amazing? We and that's part, of the, that's part of the fucking you, walk. You and I are friends and business partners, and neither one of us has been to each other's house. Not because we don't want to, but we've We're been hustling. so busy. We're so busy. Daily. It can fluctuate, right? But you our know what? In the next two years... What island are we buying? 
<laughs> right? Right. And that's and that's because of effective, valuable choices and decisions that we make that's going to that has changed the trajectory of our life and where we want to be and where we want to go. Right on. And so that's awesome. You know, I'm glad we actually talked about this subject because people don't realize that it takes one one decision to micro, change your life. Micro decision. One decision to change your life. Right. So thank you everybody for watching this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you find value in this, please share it with your friends and family members. And subscribe to this channel and hit, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Multiple times. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Stay strong.